Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over how to make tabs inside Studio One. Tabs, or tablature, is another way of reading guitar music. It basically tells you which string you're playing and which fret on that string you should play. When you're starting out as a guitar player, this kind of helps very quickly learn songs that maybe you're trying to learn because it tells you what string and where to play. Maybe it doesn't tell you how to play or maybe alternate picking or anything like that, but we're not going into that. What we're going to talk about today is how Studio One, using its notation software that's built in, can show you how to make tabs. So let's go ahead and dive into the DAW. Okay, so here we are inside of our session, and it is very, very basic. Up on top, you'll notice that I have this MIDI event going on, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. And then underneath is a guitar track with one of my guitars that I recorded in earlier, and I'm going to show you something really cool. Let's first start off with how do we see tabs? Well, when we're working with our MIDI, what we can do is open up the MIDI region by double-clicking on it. Normally, you see the piano roll. This is what we're all used to seeing. And ignore the key switches down here. I have an instance of presence with a Les Paul style sound coming through. And these are just key switches with these red keys down here. Ignore them. And you can see all of these notes that I've put in before. And yes, I could have gone in and used the pencil tool and drew each one of these notes. But I know what this riff was because it was something from a very old band of mine, and I remembered how to play it. So I wanted to just draw in the tab of what we were doing. We were in drop D, and instead of trying to transpose in my head and remember all the notes, using numbers and strings makes this a lot faster. So what we can do is go up here to the score view button, and normally when we open up score view, we see something like this. It's the actual notation of the part we've made. But we want to do tabs. We want to make our tablature or transpose this riff that maybe we're writing by penciling it in, but we want to perform it and we need to know where it is. That's really easy. On the left-hand side, underneath apply staff preset, this bottom section here, you can do a whole bunch of different things. But when you go to staff type, you can change this to tablature or standard plus tablature. We're just gonna go with the tabs right now. So I'm gonna click on this, and it instantly changes the way that we're looking at our, our staff here. This is the tab. There's six lines instead of five, like on a musical scale. Now, you'll probably notice this too. It's got question marks here because initially it's thinking standard tuning guitar but I know that this riff is in drop D. So let's change that. Over here, underneath tablature, tab type is set to guitar, and it shows you right underneath the standard tuning. That's not what we're doing. This is in drop D. So we can go here, and there's different types of tablature settings and different guitar types that you can change this to. And I know that I'm in guitar drop D. So there we go, now I have all of my tabs, my open notes, which are the zeros, that's what that means, don't play any frets, and the numbers. So on the A string, that's the way it works, the lowest string here, so the, the low E or the drop D in this case, A, D, so on and so forth, going up. So the higher the line, the higher the note, the higher the string. So here are all of my tabs. And to add in more, it's pretty easy. You go to your pencil tool, and you do have to select what kind of note you're putting in. I knew that these were all eighth notes because of the tempo and the song it was. You'll have to work on this yourself, but you can go over to any open staff or any place where you have some space and draw in a note. Let's go ahead and put one here on the A string. And now we can enter in a value. I'm gonna enter three, because I want the third fret. And then I hit enter. And now my MIDI region has extended and my tablatures are continuing. This next one auto put itself in, but now we can go and edit it. And maybe we wanna do one here. And then we can keep going. I clicked away, but it's starting to put in new notes. If I hit escape, it does have that new note in there. I can very quickly erase it. If I switch back to my pointer tool by hitting one on my keyboard, 
it erases that note because it's thinking that you want to enter in notes when you're in the pencil tool. But this isn't where it stops. Maybe I have a riff and I don't want to go in and pencil everything in. Here's where things get really cool. I'm going to close down the edit window for now. And I have this riff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mute my MIDI guitar and I'm going to play you the DI guitar of something I played. It's just this simple little walk. It's still in drop D, but it's something very easy. So here it is, the gross DI sound of something I very quickly did. <laughs> just a nice little walk down in drop D doing something that's relatively close to what the rest of the other bit was doing. That doesn't matter. Then you drop this into Melodyne. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove Melodyne right now to show you how quick and easy this is. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command and M on my keyboard, or that would be Control and M for any Windows users. And it will scan our audio. And since we're doing just like this lead line where we have individual notes, we're monophonic. We have one note at a time. Melodyne Essentials, I don't think supports polyphonic sounds. I can't remember right now, but you can just check the different versions to see if you can do this. But this is really good for lead lines that maybe you want to share with another guitarist or somebody who's learning. So here's all of our notes and we can just close Melodyne. We're not changing anything here because what we can do is we can drag this region onto a new instrument track. And let's make that real quick. I'm just gonna give it a different color so we can tell it apart. The input will be fine. And what we're gonna actually do real quick is we're just gonna choose an existing instrument and I'm gonna use the same presence, you know, sounds that I got from earlier. We didn't listen to it, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna reuse it now. Here's my new track and watch this. I'm gonna drag, drop, and there's my MIDI information. Now, if we open this up and we change to the tablature view and we change it into drop D, it's going to be the closest approximate tabs of the riff I played. And this is really close. I think I might've been on a different string, but the note value is there. You could technically do that riff here. This is Studio One and Melodyne doing their best to detect the pitch and then translate that over to tabs. You may have to refine this a little if you played the part, but this is such a leg up. Now, it's also trying to do timing, and I just did this without the click track, but if you had the click track going and you played your riff, it would get you really, really close with maybe a little bit of adjustment. So now let's do a quick comparison. I'm going to mute the MIDI and we're just going to listen to that gross DI guitar again. Okay, that was my performance. Let's mute the audio event and unmute the MIDI. And now let's listen. I also threw Empire onto the track, which is why you have that distorted sound. But if we switch over to the mixer and turn it off, you have the presence Les Paul sound playing those MIDI notes that we pulled from something we performed. Okay, while I was filming this, I did look it up real quick. With Melodyne Essential, you can only do monophonic sounds. So things like lead lines here or a single voice, something with just one sound. When you move up to the editor version of Melodyne, which is two steps above Essentials, that's when you get polyphonic. You can also do a little bit of this with polyphonic and dragging the MIDI from there, but it does get a little hairy, so I'm not going to show you right now. So you can see as a learning tool or helping to translate whatever you're writing to the rest of your band or maybe a session player, Studio One definitely makes it easy by allowing you to transpose your lick or your riff or anything else that you're working on into tabs so that anybody can read them. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For booking information, check out timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.